All right, so we are going to talk about bi bivariate data analysis. This is when we collect data on two different variables instead of one, and we try to determine if there's a relationship between the two variables, or sometimes known as a correlation between the two variables, which we'll talk about correlation later. But we're determining if the two variables are related in some way. And we use a scatter plot um, to visually represent the bivariate data so that we can come to a determination of if the two variables are related. And so we're going to be creating scatter plots in this lesson. And then we use a line of regression, which is a, or sometimes called the line of best fit. And this is a line that is used to predict data points within the trend of data, meaning that this is a line that basically describes the relationship between your two variables on your scatter plot. All right, so we're going to get started with number one. We have a survey that was taken of 10 low and high temperatures in Fahrenheit in the month of April to try to establish a relationship between a day's low temperature and high temperature. So what basically what this data table is describing here is, for example, if you go on the weather, uh, your weather app and try to check the temperature for the day, it is going to give you a low temperature for that day and a high temperature for that day. That's basically what we're doing here. So this are these are 10 days in April, and these are the low temperatures with the high temperatures for the day. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a scatter plot with this bivariate data. And so on a scatter plot, we do need to label our X and Y axis, which it's already labeled for us, low temperature, high temperature, and we would need to create a scale, which is already done for us as well. Um, so we don't need to do that on this scatter plot. However, I do want to describe what this these symbols mean down here, which sometimes you actually might see these symbols drawn like this. Um, and that means the same thing. But basically what this means is that this is zero here, and now we skipped a bunch of values to get to 20, and now my scale of my graph starts from this 20, and it's 22, 24, 26, so my, my graph is going, my scale is going up by twos. But if I just went up by twos starting at the number zero, then I wouldn't be able to fit 40 on my x-axis. So this is a way to skip a bunch of values and then start the scale on your graph. Now, this can only be done at the beginning of the x-axis and y-axis. It cannot be done in the middle of your x-axis and y-axis. All right, but that's what that means. So we're going to get started. A scatter plot is just a bunch of dots on the graph. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to plot these points. So I have the point 2649, which again, the scales are going by twos. So 26 22, 24, 26, and then 49 is going to be pretty close to uh, 50 here. My next point is 28, 50. So plotting that, it would be about here. My next plant point is 30, 57. So 2, 4, 6, it's halfway in between the 6 and the 8 on the 50s. My next point is 32, 54. Then I have 3460. Then I have 3558. Oops, sorry, that's not 58. 3558 would be here. And then I have 3764, so go ahead and plot that. And then 3866. And then 41, 
63, and then 45, 72. Okay, so this is your scatter plot. And now we're going to draw our line of best fit, which is also called the line of regression, through the data set. Now, the line of best fit does not necessarily go through the first point on your scatter plot and the last point, and it also doesn't necessarily go through the most data points. Essentially, a line of best fit should have about the same number of points above your line and below your line. So, I'm going to get my line out ready to go, but okay, this is not the line of best fit. I need to adjust this. Um, but a good line of best fit would maybe be about here on your graph. Um, maybe I'm going to adjust it a little more like so, because here I have one, two, three, four, five data points that lie above this line. And then I have one, two, three, four data points lying below the line. And then there's one on the line or close to being on the line. Um, and that, um, actually, sorry, this data point here probably should be more so down like this. So let me redo that line of best fit. It's hard to get the line of best fit exactly right. Um, but that, that looks maybe about correct here. So this would be a good line of best fit. And yeah, this would probably be. All right. So, um, so we have one, two, three, four, five data points below the line and one, two, three, four, five data points above the line. So this would be a decent line of best fit here. Now it does say to calculate the slope of this line by picking two points on your line. And this does not necessarily have to be data points. For example, um, I am going to pick whole number points. So the number 2852. That is a data point that's on my line of best fit. And the data point uh, may be Forty three, sixty eight. That's a point on the line as well. So I'm going to use both of those. And now to calculate the slope, we're just going to use the slope formula, which remember is your, uh, well, I guess let's label our, our X and Y axis here. So, or X and Y points here. So I'm going to label my points X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And so I'm going to do y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1 and a 68 minus a 52 comes out to be a 16 and a 43 minus a 28 gives me a 15. And now a 16 divided by 15, it doesn't say where to round, we're going to round to the nearest uh, hundredth here. So we get about 1.07 as my slope. Now it says using our model or our line of best fit. So when I say using the model, I'm talking about the line of best fit. So using our model to estimate the high temperature, we want to estimate the high temperature for a day on April, given that the low temperature was 42 degrees. So basically we're going to look at 42 on our x-axis, our low temperature here. And now we're going to estimate what our high temperature was on that day. And so at 42 degrees, my high temperature was about here, 
which I'm going to estimate that that's in between a 60 uh, six and a 68. So I'm going to estimate it to be, let's just do whole numbers here. I'm going to estimate it to be about 67 degrees. That's what they want there. So the model predicts that on a, a day that has a low temperature of 42 degrees, that the high temperature would be about 67. And let's actually do the about equal to sign here, about 67 degrees. All right, moving on to number two. So generally, the fuel efficiency of a car changes with the weight of the car. A survey of some cars with their weights and gas mileages are shown below. Now the weight, this is in thousands of pounds, so a 3.7 would actually be 3,700 and so forth, and then here's the miles per gallon. Typically, if you have a car that weighs more, your miles per gallon is going to be a lot less. You're going to get less miles per gallon on your mileage. So now it says to construct a scatter plot with this data set. So we are going to need to label our x and y axis and create a scale. So I went ahead and I labeled my x and y axis, and then I also um, skipped a bunch of values. I started my x axis at 3.2 and I went by 0.4s, so the next one would be 3.6, then the next one's 4, then the next one's 4.4, then the next one's 4.8, and so forth. And then I started my y-axis at 18, and then I went by 4s all the way up. So now we're going to um, plot these points. So my first point is at 3.7 and 38. So remember, 3.6 is uh, in between the 3.2 and the 4. So a 3.7 and a 38 is going to be maybe about here. All right, so I'm going to have you pause the video. I'm going to have you plot the rest of these dots by using the same scale. Okay, so this is what your scatter plot looks like. And now we want to draw our line of best fit or our line of regression. Now, um, this one again, it, it's going to need to go or be about uh, through the same number of points above the line and below the line. So I'm going to play around with this line of regression. Now, unfortunately, you guys don't have that ability to play around with the line of regression, but um, you can kind of, you know, just guess about where this is going to go. To me, this, eh, maybe a little less steep here. To me, this looks like a good line of regression right about here. So we're going to need to estimate our y-intercept because now we want to write the equation for our line of regression, which is y is equal to mx plus b. My y-intercept is about 46 here. So now I'm going to want to find the slope as well. So I'm going to need to pick two points in order to find the slope. So maybe a good uh, slope or a good point to pick would be this point here which would be 4.234. And then another good point to pick would maybe be um, this point here, which is five, sorry, six, six, 18. So I'm gonna have you find the equation uh, by substituting or finding your slope. Okay, so this would be a good estimate of what the equation would put, be. Now we want to use the model, which is this equation here, to predict what the fuel efficiency would be if we had a car that had a weight of 4,300 pounds. Now that would mean that we have 4.3 in our equation. So I'm going to substitute that in. And 
And this is what we get. Now in letter E, we want to put 40 in for